Hi friends! In our previous video, we learned that around us, there are many animals that have special characteristics. That's right! Every animal and plant has a way to adapt to its environment so that they can survive and continue to reproduce. Animals aren't the only ones that have special characteristics though. Plants do have their own unique characteristics, like lotus plants which have air cavities in their stems. Lotuses have roots that grow from the bottom of the water, and the leaf stems are usually spread out, causing the leaves to appear as if it's floating on the water. But the flower stems grow upright, so that its flower emerge from the surface of the water. If we cut across the lotus stems or root, we will see holes or air cavities which carry oxygen to the stem and roots. Hmm, there's another unique plant that eats insects. I think my mom called it the Nephinthes. Nephinthes, aka the tropical pitcher plant, is a carnivorous plant that eats insects. They usually grow in swamps, but the nitrogen levels in the soil are too low to provide enough nitrogen for the plant to grow. So, to meet its needs, Nephinthes eats insects as a nutritional supplement. Nephinthes leaf looks like a cup, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? Inside its cup-like leaf, a sweet liquid-like nectar is produced to attract insects. Ah, uh, I know. Insects are lured by the sweet smell of nectar and perch themselves on the cup. Then they fall inside. Then, the liquid dissolves the trapped insects and absorbs its nitrogen. How about the Venus flytrap, people? Venus flytraps have one hinge and their leaves are lined with hairs. Its leaves remain open while waiting for insects to come. And when they land on the leaf, touching its sensitive hairs, the leaf immediately closes. Then the leaf will digest the trapped insect and absorb its nitrogen. And there's this one really big stinky flower. Ugh, it smells pretty bad. People even say that it smells like decaying flesh. It's the Rafflesia arnoldii, Lula. Rafflesia flowers don't have chlorophyll. So to get its food, they need to live as a parasite on the roots of other plants. Their stems consist of thread-like strands of tissue that grow on the host plant tissue. We can find Rafflesia flowers in the tropical rainforests of Southeast Asia, and one of them is in Bengkulu. Did you know that Rafflesia is the biggest flower in the world? Its diameter can reach a meter! Wow, really? Rafflesia flowers reproduce with the help of insects such as flies through insect-assisted pollination. That's why it smells so bad. It needs to attract flies. That's right! Also, this flower only blooms for about 7 days. After that, it'll die and rot. Here's another unique plant. It has a body coated with sharp spines. It's known as a cactus, Lula. It's well known for its sharp spines and its amazing feature to store water easily. Because cacti grow in hot and dry desert areas. When it rains, cacti absorb as much water as possible. They have one long root that penetrates into the ground and root hairs that spread to the sides. Those roots absorb water when it's raining. Before the water evaporates back, the water is stored in its fat stem. The stem is covered by a thick outer layer to minimize the loss of water due to evaporation. After the rainy season, they have swollen stems. Then during the dry season, the cacti shrink back as water is used up. The water content inside its stem can fulfill its needs of water up to two years. Did you know that the spines in cactus stems are its leaves? These spines have small surface areas to reduce water loss by evaporation. Oh, I see. So the spines of the cactus are not just there. Spines protect themselves from animals that want to damage its water-resistant layer. Other than cacti, there's another plant that's able to absorb water. They're called orchids. Orchids are epiphytic plants that live in other plants, but they don't harm the plants they occupy. Orchids grow on large tree branches to trap sunlight for photosynthesis. They also have aerial roots to absorb rainwater and somata on the leaves to get carbon dioxide. Even in the aerial root, chlorophyll is present so photosynthesis can be carried out. Wow! Our creator is really creative, isn't he? I learned many special characteristics of the plants in this lesson. That's right, Lula. Now we know that every part of the plant has its own function. See you soon!